Hello and welcome to this, the first video in a new series detailing the fourth version of the Savage Worlds rule set for Fantasy Grounds. This rule set is based off the core RPG code set and thus has a number of minor differences from the earlier versions. To create this video, I am using the latest version of the rule set available at the time. This is a development version of the rule set and additional functionality may be added before completion. It is anticipated that a version of this rule set will be added to the test mode of Fancy Grounds, enabling a greater number of people to aid in nailing down any remaining bugs. In this first video, I'm going to cover the options screen and other steps that a GM might take when setting up a new campaign in Fancy Grounds. So to begin, I'll select Create New Campaign. I'll select the Savage Worlds rule set. I will give the campaign a file name. This will create a folder under the campaigns folder. And under here, I would select any extensions I want to use, for example, adventure deck or a theme. In this case, I'm not going to use any, so I will just click start. After a few minutes, Fancy Grounds will load the rule set and display the main screen. At this point, I will enable the modules I wish to use in this campaign. The modules button has been removed from the list at the top and now you access it via library. So you click on library and then click modules and all the modules are listed here. For this uh, demonstration, I'm just going to be using the Deluxe Player's Guide and the GM's Guide. So I'll open up the GM's Guide, I'll open up the Player's Guide and I will set that the Player's Guide is automatically downloaded to any players that connect. The Deluxe GM Guide is blocked for player access. I will close down the module activation window and as you can see the modules have all been loaded and all the information is already available. Now I am going to go into the preferences which has a tooltip of options and when clicked on opens the options window. There are a number of uh, different uh, options you could set and loading in certain extensions may add additional options to this window. The Adventure Deck, for example, gives you a number of ways to customize the Adventure Deck. To begin, I shall discuss the options under the Client section. These adjust settings on both the GM version and the player version of Fancy Grounds. When we click, turn on the mood setting, it adds a mood button to the chat window. This allows players who are primarily using text mode, or just even if they're using voice and they just want to emote items, to set the character's mood. At the moment, as the GM, I do not have any NPCs collected, so any typing I put into the chat window will come from the GM. But for the purposes of this demonstration, that's fine. So if I click mood, I can say I am angry and then say and as you can see there pipe down people and it says that I'm angry if I want to cancel a mood I can close that this setting will also appear on players if the mood version option is enabled display a dice numbers on traits this defaults to on this will actually put the maximum number for any dice on an NPC's screen or on a player's screen. This makes it easier to determine what a dice is. If we turn that option off, as you can see, the numbers are no longer displayed. The mouse wheel editing option allows you to specify what key it must be held down to use the mouse wheel to make changes. For example, if I wanted to give this air elemental a higher vigor, it is currently set to control. If I hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel, it will let me change the die type. This prevents accidental uh, changes when trying to scroll through windows. The second section of the options screen is the game settings. These affect dice rolls and aspects of the actual day-to-day -day gaming. Auto apply encumbrance will automatically make any strength or agility modifiers required as per the encumbrance settings rules. 
if we open up the character sheet and go to inventory the total carried will be automatically calculated based on weapons armor etc the load limit if set will basically be used to calculate the encumbrance penalties if set to zero penalties will not be automatically applied auto apply fatigue and auto apply wounds will automatically add the modifiers to the dice roll based on fatigue and wound penalties if we give the player character one point of fatigue and two wounds and then make an agility roll you can see that two two wounds and one fatigue penalty were automatically applied to the roll these can be turned off for a specific role if you want to by clicking the little red icon there which turns off the wound penalty now if i roll the dice again you can see the wound penalty was removed if i want to turn off both wound and fatigue penalties i need to turn off both buttons roll the dice likewise the last option there will turn off encumbrance penalties it automatically turns back on after the roll so it's only for that one particular roll auto update derived stats this is a very useful ability and i usually turn it on what it means is these stats here will be automatically updated so as the vigor goes up the base toughness changes if i go into here create a fighting skill give it a d8 the parry automatically increases this is also useful if players are wearing armor or have other abilities if you right mouse button on toughness a modifiers button appears and in here you could add in that they're wearing a chain shirt which gives them plus two toughness and it's automatically applied likewise on parry if they go wild attack my players like to do a lot and we put a minus two penalty in there it will automatically reduce the parry so when a player wants, commits a wild attack you, you can come in here and turn it off or on so it automatically calculates the parries as i say there's no limit to how many uh, settings you can put in these stats and my players do tend to fill these up quite a bit depending on what they're doing at the time auto update weapon damage is a very similar stat again i usually like to turn this one on what we then do is if we go back to here and if I open up the player's guide go to gear and then down to hand weapons and we'll add in a longsword pop it onto the character sheet and as you can see the longsword does strength plus d8 damage but the character here only has a d4 strength so with this setting turned on it automatically drops the damage down to d4s if the character's strength increases to d6 it automatically does d6 damage plus d6 strength if it goes up to d8 then it will be d8 plus d8 if it goes up to d10 then it will correctly only improve the strength dice in certain circumstances you may wish to override the automatic weapon damage calculation if you open up the stat and put a question mark after the strength stat and then close it it doesn't auto update if you press the middle mouse button it will do so and now you can see that it's although the dice strength is still d4 it has actually replaced the d4 with the original d8 likewise if we increase the player character strength to d8 maybe this character has a magic longsword that when wielded gives the uh, character plus one strength this is easily done by if you open the stat up if you replace the question mark with an exclamation mark close it again middle mouse button the exclamation mark increases the die type by one so if the player character had a d6 strength as you can see it automatically increases it to d8 if you wanted to create a magic item that gave you two die increases what you do is you put two exclamation marks in the box we close that do it again now you can see that die is always too higher than the stat so on a d8 it goes up to a d12 if you make it a d10 it just goes plus one plus two as per the rules in addition although this longsword um, is based off the strength stat it does not have to be if we go back into the settings here and decide that this is some longsword that doesn't use strength it uses the character's smarts instead if we just put 
SMA in there. The first three letters of the ability for smarts give him and and press the middle mouse button to calculate and then increase the smarts to a D12 plus one. As you can see there now this longsword uses smarts rather than strength to calculate the damage. You can do some very complicated calculations if you really wanted to. Um, if we wanted to add spirit in there as well we can do so. We hit that and now as you can see it's turned it into a three dice calculation. The next option is the language features. When this one is turned on it adds an additional button to the sidebar. When this is uh, selected in here you can there's an empty box with languages. If I click the button here I can add in a language. Uh, we'll have Elvish. Let's add uh, Orkish and for argument's sake we'll add Dwarvish. This also adds a button down here. Now what it will allow me to do is pick a language I am talking in. As you can see here I'm talking in Orkish. Now if the player character doesn't speak Orkish he doesn't see what I typed he just sees some random letters. So what I will do is I will give this player character the ability to speak Orkish. If we go to notes, go to the language box, there are none there. So what I need to do is enable it as the GM. So I go back to the GM screen, make them visible. This means they are player selectable languages. It may well be I don't actually want players to be able to speak Orkish. I can leave it turned off, but in this case I do. So we'll turn them on. We'll go back to the player character. You can now see they're there. I'll drag Orkish into the player character's list of languages. If I go back to here again, retype hello in Orkish, go back to the player character. You can now see that he can read Orkish because he speaks the Orkish language. If I therefore talk to him in Elvish, He doesn't understand it. It should be noted that if you actually try and drag off boxes, it, it does not make it readable. An earlier version did have that problem, but now as you can see, it will basically completely generate random characters, so you have no chance of understanding what the character said. Show DM dice rolls. Straightforward enough one. If I roll a dice as the GM, uh, the player won't see the dice. Let's see if I can do it in such a way that I can keep it going. So if I go, nope, let's try one more time. There we go. So the player just sees the grey dice spinning, but they don't actually see the result when it finishes. If, however, I turn on show GM dice rolls and give it another little spin, you can see that the GM rolled a four. Chat, show NPC icons and show NPC portraits. With these turned on, uh, any time a player character or NPC chats, their icon will be put in the portrait where the question marks are here. Dice tower, defaults to off. If I turn on the dice tower, it adds a dice tower to the GM screen if showing GM dice rolls is turned on. If I turn that off, the dice tower vanishes because as a GM you do not need the dice tower if you're hiding all your rolls. But if we turn that on and the dice tower is on, I can now roll a, I'll roll a four-sided dice here and you can see the players can see I rolled a one. However, if I drop a d8 on the tower, it rolls and you can see I rolled a two, but it doesn't show up on the player character screen. They see I've rolled a dice, but they don't see the result. For the player character's point of view, it adds the tower there. So if I would rolled a dice as a player, they don't get the result, but the GM does. Item identification is one of the bits of functionality brought over from the core roll set. If it is turned off and we create an item, create a backpack, it's got a cost of 12 gold pieces and a rate of two leather pack pack we can give this item to the player characters inventory so we'll pop it over to inventory drag the backpack drop it on the player when they open it up they just see a leather backpack with item identification turned on 
if we go back to the pack pack, it adds some extra fields. It puts an ID icon there to show that the item has not been identified. It asks for a non-ID name and the notes that are shown when the backpack isn't identified. The cost and the weight are hidden away and then under here is a description of what the item is once it's been identified. If I share the backpack to the player screen, you can see it says a backpack with notes of a leather backpack. If as the GM I now let them identify the object, when we go back to the notes, you can now see the description of what it actually does is there and the cost and the weight. And it also shows that the item has been identified. Make active combat tracker, the GM voice. Uh, this again is a setting that has been around for a while. When turned on, if the GM types anything, it will automatically change the ID to the current NPC on the combat tracker. Show bennies, show condition, show derived stats and show power points are a group of settings that will turn on or off icons on the portrait. The settings can be set to on, GM only or off. If they're set to on, then all players can see each other's settings. GM only means only the GM can see them. Off turns them off. Show bennies shows the number of bennies the character has on the portrait. Show condition will show what happens when the character suffers wounds. If they're shaken or if they're incapacitated. Show derived stats will show the parry and toughness of the player character and show our power points will show the power points. The last setting under the game section is show whispers to GM. This is set to on by default. What this means is if a player whispers to another player, the GM is in on the secret. Conversely, you can turn the setting off so players can whisper to players and the GM can't read it. The next section of the options window are the setting rules. These three setting rules correspond directly to setting rules found in the Jaluxe Player's Guide and these allow you to turn these options on and Fancy Grounds will support the extra functionality required for these setting rules. If Joker's Wild is turned on, then every time a player is dealt a Joker in combat, the entire party will automatically be awarded a Benny, saving the GM having to do so. The No Power Points option makes changes to the character sheet. If we turn the option on, the Power Points is removed, the Benny's box comes slightly bigger, the Portrait's box moves over, and an extra button appears there, which gives you the ability to put a token on there. If we turn the power points off again, everything's resized back. Skill specialization gives you the ability to add specializations to beneath skills. This is just an additional line of text. So we right mouse button on the skill. We say we want to create an entry. We want to add a specialization. So I'm specialized in swords and maybe also I'm specialized in maces. If I want to remove a specialization, I right mouse button over it and there's the option to delete specialization. The final two sections of the options window are combat and token. These will be covered in a separate video. I hope you have found this a very useful introduction to uh, the fourth version of the Savage Worlds rule set and hope you will join me for the rest of the series. This video is copyright 2014. Permission is given to distribute this video in its entirety. You may not edit this video in any way. Fantasy Grounds is a trademark of Smiteworks USA LLC and Fantasy Grounds is copyright 2004 to 2014 Smiteworks USA LLC.